And welcome to uh, our Faith and Victory Church Sunday morning service. <clears throat> I'm going to ask everybody to um, go ahead and share that we're online live right now. Uh, again, we're meeting at, at uh, 1030 instead of 1 o'clock today. And um, just uh, want to ask the time to share with you over this weekend. Instead of just not having a service, we did want to uh, at least have a... Um, short at least a short time together in the word and uh, talk about uh this wonderful day this time that we're celebrating right now of thanksgiving and uh so i welcome you all for that are joining us right now I'll give everybody a couple minutes to get in um i hope everyone so far has had a wonderful thanksgiving um we took down a 24 pound bird um we it's like the locust in the bible descending upon it and um it, it was it was good eating. Hallelujah! Uh, ate on it for uh, I forgot how many meals. I think we we just we, we kind of figured out that we had twenty um, meals, uh, individual meals off just the breast, uh, plus about three pounds of turkey salad we made that people have been eating sandwiches off of. Um, so praise the Lord! I mean that was like uh, wow, Amen. So it um, it was a thirty five you know pound dollar bird, but at 20 meals, you got a dollar and a half per person, plus all the other stuff, but still, uh, that's like one meal out at a restaurant in town. We got 20 meals off of it. So it was good, hallelujah. So, But we welcome all of you. We trust that you've been blessed. We had a good time with your family. And, um, you know, God is good. And we do want to take some time to reflect upon his goodness and reflect upon... Um, how wonderful it is to serve the Lord and to um, um, think of Thanksgiving. So, um, you, know, one of the more, you know, one of the most important aspects of our lives that come under serious attack is Thanksgiving. Uh, Satan's always attempting to rob you uh, of you having a heart of Thanksgiving. Um, you know, he's always trying to get you consumed with everything that's wrong. And I mean, you know, listen, the past couple of years has been a challenge in so many ways for so many people um, with, um, you know, the constant narrative about COVID, the constant narrative about government intervention, the constant narrative about governmental control, um, that can just get you cons in politics and then constant narrative on politics. It can get you so consumed with the, the affairs around you that we forget the things that we have, th that we have to be thankful for. I saw somebody's meme the other day that said, you know, uh, while you're complaining about, you know, this or that, remember there's somebody in a hospital somewhere praying that they would have your life. And uh, that kind of struck me. I thought, you know, that's true. You got people who are, who are dealing with um, terminal diseases. They're dealing with, um, the, you know, dealing with situations that they would they would pay to have your life. And uh, we get so consumed with stuff sometimes, we forget how good God's been to us, and where we are in Him, and the blessings He's brought into our life. Because when you lose the heart of Thanksgiving. Uh, you become a selfish and cynical individual. Uh, everything is cynical. Everything is about you. And um, only what is in your interest is important to you. That's, that's, just, that's dangerous spiritually. Um, and emotionally, it's, it's dangerous. On uh, and, and all those reasons. Thanksgiving helps us maintain a grateful heart and keeps us looking to God, who is the source of our joy. Let's face it. Wearing a mask or not wearing a mask is not the source of your joy. I hate them. I, I, you know, um, I, I refuse to wear one unless somebody tells me I got to put it on. I mean, uh, in some places, I just turn around and walk back out if they do. You know, I, I despise wearing a mask. But my joy is not found in the mask or not the mask. My joy has to be found in God. I'm sure that the children of Israel... Uh, under Roman occupation, had a lot to complain about. Um, 
Yet, you know, they were told to have joy. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Uh, so we got to remember that we are to be full of joy, but joy cannot come in an ungrateful heart. Hallelujah. Um, so let's approach this time of year from Thanksgiving now into uh, the celebration of Christmas, the birth of Jesus, moving into the next uh, calendar year um, with the purest of hearts of gratefulness, being thankful to the most high for all he's blessed us with and bestowed upon us. Um, of course, in particular, the greatest gift of all, eternal life through Jesus Christ, that he paid the ultimate price to redeem us <clears throat> from, our, from our sin and destruction and to reconcile us to himself by the blood of Jesus, hallelujah, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and made us unto our God a kingdom of priests. Now I know King James says kings and priests. The, the, the Hebrew literally says a kingdom of priests. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, how can we ever demonstrate before God an ungrateful heart after all he's done for us in redeeming us? Hallelujah. You know, there's a lot in the scripture about uh, being grateful. And uh, we need to realize that, you know, 32 times in the Hebrew Bible, <clears throat> um, the word toda, T-O-D-H-A-H, -H, um, carries the implication of words of thanks to God, toda, thanksgiving to God, a, a ritual act of thanksgiving, a religious song of thanksgiving, a Levitical choir, a verbal confession of sin, this is, Tada is never used for expressing thanks to a human being. So give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. So we are to have Tada in our life, to be uh, consumed with thanking God. <clears throat> it comes, the noun Tada, comes from the what it calls the form of the verb Yada. Uh, which indicates an acknowledgement of some kind. And it usually has to do with giving praise to God. Um, hallelujah. And even when it relates to acknowledging sin, uh, the worshiper gives honor to God, prepares the way to, for God's display of salvation. In other words, uh, yada in a confession of sin leads to praising God for his forgiving grace and power. Hallelujah. Um, Formal expressions of thanks, of Tuda, were made at the tabernacle and temple. Um, that there was a thank offering. Uh, it was it was one of the fellowship offerings. Um, along with the words of the thank offering, the worshippers were to bring food in the form of cakes of leaven, and unleavened bread, unleavened wafers, cakes of fine flour and meat. They would be eaten with the priest in the presence of the Lord, and all the meat was to be eaten on the day it was offered. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So Tada was more than an offering. It was also a song of praise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm, uh, I'm using my computer, and I don't normally do that, but I'm using it today. And um, I just went too far. So let me get back. Hallelujah. To where I was. Now, according to his subscription, was, um, Acts 109 was composed for the purpose of giving thanks. Amos 4.5 indicates that God was not always pleased with the Tada because it was offered by a sinful hypocrite who wanted to practice religion without repentance or righteousness. So that leads us to understand that Tada, being a um, word of praise, of thanksgiving, must come from the heart. Not as an actual, not as a form. You know, that we came to church and said, "Well, we 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 tore it up today in worship." You know, we had us a we we rocked it in worship. You know, uh, if you're rocking it in worship and it's not out of your heart, it's nothing more than a fleshly demonstration. And uh, God's not pleased with that. Um, and it also could refer to the Levitical choir that offered a song of. Uh, thanksgiving and praise to God. Hallelujah. So, 
Um, let's look at some scriptures uh, that use the, the word uh, translated thanksgiving or thanks. And keep in mind that, you know, we're, we celebrate Thanksgiving um, in our country. And I forget all the new narratives coming out of the nut, the crazy, nutty, uh, anti-Christ, demonized people. Thanksgiving was established to give thanks to God. And everything about a lot of the current narratives are anti-Christ. They're an anti-Christ spirit. And um, we just have to recognize that and move on and stop letting the squeaky wheel get the grease. Because we are, we are going to thank God uh, for this nation. More evangelism has gone out of this nation than anyone on the, on the planet in the history of the world. More money has been sent to missions out of this nation than any nation in the, uh, on the planet in the history of humanity. This nation was raised up by God to preach the gospel. Were, were there bad things that happened? Of course. There are always going to be evil men who will try to uh, subvert and twist things. But the bottom line is this was raised up by God for the propagating of the gospel all over the world. And I don't really care where a bunch of, of naysayers and people demonized and operating under an antichrist spirit have to say about it. I really don't. So they can just go, you know, blow in the wind, take the mask off the old Lone Ranger and um, spit in the wind and pull um, Superman's cape if they want to. But I'm going to worship God, thank God, and continue to honor and to praise God for his blessings and what he's done. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Look at Psalm 26. The 26th Psalm. The verse 6 says, I will wash mine hands in innocence, see, so that I will compass thine altar, O Lord, that I may publish with my the voice of thanksgiving and tell all thy wondrous works. He was going, notice he wanted to cleanse himself and be pure so that he could share the wondrous works of God. Paul talks about in the New Testament how that um, he didn't want to preach the gospel and then find himself to be a castaway himself. And we should, we should strive to be a living testimony of the goodness of God and the blessings of God and testify of his wondrous works. Amen? Hallelujah. Look at the 50th Psalm. Psalm 50. Looking in the um, 14th verse. Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto God. We just need to be praying, thanking God. Well, you don't know how bad it is. It's rough out there. What have I got to be thankful for? Well, I, I remember Brother Hagin sharing the story of the woman came to his house when they woke him up out of a good sleep, sleeping in, and I think he had just gotten off the road, and she went, she came in, and he said, uh, "What's what's wrong?" She said, "I don't feel safe," and you know that could mess you, that could mess you up. You know, somebody wakes you up, gets you out of bed to tell you they don't feel safe. Praise the Lord. Well, it's not about feelings, but, you know, the truth and reality of the Word of God. And, uh, and he's thinking, I don't feel saved right now either. You know, because it was... <laughs> it woke me up out of a good sleep. But um, he says, when I, when I don't feel what, you know, spiritual or whatever, I just praise and worship God. She said, what do you, what do you mean? He says, well, watch this. And he says, Lord, I thank you. I thank you that I'm born again, that I've passed from death unto life, that the nature of the Father indwells me. I thank you for the precious gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who has redeemed me out of darkness and brought me into thy marvelous light. I thank you for your holy, precious, written word, whereby there's revelation and light um, and re about you and who you are, and for the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, whereby we can commune with you, Spirit the Spirit, he said he got over there after a couple minutes of that, and he got he just started worshiping and praising God. And um, 
She said, and he stopped and looked at her. And she said, I said, I saw, I saw it. You got that one spot. And all of a sudden, your whole countenance changed. He said, well, you try it. So she started, she started copying. Well, Lord, I thank you I'm born again, that I passed from death unto life, that the nature of the Father indwells me. And she got along there about the same place uh, he did. She said all of a sudden she started worshiping and praising God. Hallelujah. And uh, he said, see there? So, um, you know, we need to be having a life, a life of thanksgiving and praise to God for what, all that he's already done, all that he is doing, and all that he's established as what's going to be done in our lives in the future. We have something to praise God about. Hallelujah. Well, I don't have as much as someone else. See, they that compare themselves among themselves are not wise. I remember from a movie, um, it, was one, it was actually the prequel, uh, the very first prequel in Star Wars, and um, or second, the second one, the second one. Um, so Star Wars two. Um, you know they were they were in a like a submarine thing, and there's this big, huge, weird looking fish chasing them. And I, you know, it's about to get about the time it just about gets them. Something else gets that big fish, and uh, the uh, the uh, Jedi goes, um, Qui Gon Qui Gon Jim goes. There's always a bigger fish. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, there's always a bigger fish. There's always a bigger ailment. There's always a bigger problem. But you know what? God's bigger than all of it. And we cannot be uh, uptight that so-and-so's got a got more money, got a nicer house, got a bigger car, this, that, bigger church, bigger, that, more popular, more this, more that than us. We have to learn to be thankful as the Apostle Paul said, that whatever I say that I am initiated in, therein to be content. Or as the 20th century New Testament says about that verse in Philippians, uh, to be independent of the circumstances. See, the circumstances of life cannot rule and reign in our hearts uh, to determine whether we have thanksgiving or not. Why? Because everything in this world is going to be burned up. Everything that we possess in this planet is going to be burned up. That's why the Word of God tells us to lay treasures or store treasures up in heaven where moth does not enter in, no rust corrupts. Hallelujah. Our, our treasures are in heaven. And um, so we need, we need to remind ourselves of that. Look up the uh, 69th Psalm. And David says here in the 30th verse, I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. I will praise the name of God with a song and magnify him with thanksgiving. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We need to magnify the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, we used to that, that course that was really a, um, we used to call them scripture courses. I will magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Um, great song, uh, Miriam's song, they used to call it. <clears throat> and uh, she, she sang it when the uh, split Red Sea collapsed on the children of Israel. Amen? Hallelujah. Well, I'm sorry, I just sang the wrong song. That's the Miriam song, the horse and the ride thrown into the sea. It's still a good song. All right. Look over, if you will, to the 95th Psalm. Look at verse 1. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise unto the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. Why? For the Lord is a great God and the King above all gods. In his hands are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and the, his hands formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are his people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. And today, if you'll hear his voice, and harden not your heart, we, um, 
as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me and proved me and saw me work. Forty years long was I agreed with this generation. It is a people that do err in their heart, and they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath. Wrath, they should not enter into my rest. But you know what? It comes on and says about the New Testament believer, let us enter in. Hallelujah. We get to enter in. And so let's thank, give thanksgiving to God. Can you say amen? Look at the 100th Psalm. Just a little bit further over. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. Why? For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Hallelujah. And his truth endureth to all generations. Praise God. 107th Psalm. I'll be honest with you, too many times we're, just, we're too busy trying to find a way not to be thankful. Well, you just don't know what I've gone through. Nope. My life experience... I can't say my life experience is equal to your life experience. Probably nobody's is. Okay? But the Bible says that Jesus was tempted in every point like we are yet without sin. He faced in type and so forth everything you faced or could face. But he still honored the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you look at the um, 22nd Psalm, God's suffering servant. And he, he, he lifts up his, well, let me look back there real quick. After, he's, after he talks about being crucified on the cross in the 22nd Psalm, um, he looks down in the verse, 22, it says, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise thee. And this is Jesus on the cross saying, you know, he, he sees his bones poured out, a heart melted like wax in the midst of his bowels. They gaped upon him with their mouths as a raven and roaring lion. The dogs have encompassed him. All this, he sees all of his bones are just, he's dehydrated. And then he goes on and says, I will declare your name in the midst of my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise thee. Couldn't be any worse than what Jesus was going through. But he declares he's going to honor and worship give thanks to God. Hallelujah. So Psalm 107, verse, uh, look down around verse 21. Back at verse 20. 19. Let's go to verse 19. Now their soul looked forth all manner of meat, and they're drawn near into the gates of, I'm sorry, when, when, we went too high. When they draw near into the gates of hell, then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble. And he saveth them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that, me, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving. Declare his works with rejoicing. There are going to be times it's just going to be sacrificial thanksgiving. Because you don't feel like it. It don't look great. I mean, you're bummed out. You're complaint, you want to complain. But the Bible says, I will sacrifice. Hallelujah. The sacrifices of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. And declare his works with rejoicing. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Look at the 116th Psalm. Why are you in the Psalms? Because there's a lot of good stuff in the Psalms. That's why I'm in the Psalms. Hallelujah. Psalm 116. Verse 17, I will offer thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. Here we argue with sacrifice. When does sacrifice enter in? When you don't feel like it? Hello? You ever not felt like getting out of bed? Hello? And you had to sacrifice to get up, go to work so you could provide for the family and da 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 and all that. And you wanted to stay in that bed so bad. You know, pull the cover up over your head, hide from the world, and just sleep. There are days that you spiritually, you just want to pull the covers over your head and hide. And those are the days you need to, more than ever, offer the sacrifice of Thanksgiving. Because emotionally, um, physically, now your emotions could affect affect you um, physically. Um, the depressive emotional uh, mindset can suppress your body. Your body just uh, you get the woe is me. You get the eors. The church needs to be full of tiggers and have no eors. Amen. If you don't watch Winnie the Pooh, watch it for just for that. Study Tigger. He's bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. I mean, he's just hopping and pouncing all over the place. Uh, the most wonderful thing about Tigger is, is, tigger, is uh, Tigger's are a wonderful thing. And then Eeyore is, it don't matter. I really didn't need a tail anyway. My roof, oh, it's leaking. Oh, well. I mean, you're just talking about, I mean bumitis, depression bomb going off all the time. And we have to uh, offer sacrifices. Sacrifices of thanksgiving. Praise and honor and worship God and glorify him. Amen. Look at the 147th Psalm. Psalm 147, looking down in verse 7. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praises upon the harp unto our God, who covereth the heavens with clouds, who prepareth rain for the earth, who maketh grass to grow upon the mountains, who giveth to the beasts his food, and to the young ravens which cry, he delighteth not in the strength of the horse. He taketh not pleasure in the legs of a man. The Lord taketh pleasure in him, them that fear him, and those that hope in his mercy. So what do we do? Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praises. Hallelujah. Sing praises upon the harp unto our God. Amen. Moving out of the Psalms now over to Isaiah. Chapter 51, verse 3, For the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all who all her waste places and will make her wilderness like Eden and the desert her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein. Thanksgiving and the voice of medley. So throughout, throughout, all this, God, this, this is a recurring thing. Well, thanking God, having thanksgiving, even when stuff's going rough, we can still be thankful to God for all that He is and all that He does. And uh, while we do that, we're going to jump over to Jeremiah. The 30th chapter. Thus saith the Lord, verse 18, verse 18. Thus saith the Lord, behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents and have mercy on his dwelling places 
and the city shall be builded upon her own heap, and the palace shall remain after the manner thereof. And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving. And the voice of them that make merry, and I will multiply them, and they shall not be few. I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. God says he's going to restore, and out of that restoration comes thanksgiving. Hallelujah. The problem a lot of times is people don't recognize their restoration and or. They're just not satisfied. They want more. God's done this wonderful thing for them, and they're just not satisfied. They want more because somebody else has more. And uh, we need to be thankful to God how far he's brought us. And I don't believe he's done. He's finished. I don't believe that, you know, um, just because he's gone a certain distance, he's not going to do anything else. However, we have to be thankful with where we are. Like I said, Paul, Paul writes in um, Philippians chapter 4. Verse 11, King James says, Not that I speak in respect to want, for I've learned the whatsoever state I'm in, therein to be content. Uh, 20th century says, I've learned that uh, however I'm initiated, to be independent of the circumstances. You know, he said, he, said, he, said, he knows how to be abounded, abased. He knows how to abound. In everything, whether he's been hungry or had too much, in verse uh he goes on verse 13 and says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. In other words, we can thank God that in the midst of famine, because we know this, he's going to take care of us. I may not have filet mignon on the, on the table. And we may have political agendas where the, the uh, wealthy ruling bureaucrats are eating, you know, lobster tail and all this, and you're eating, you know, synthetic lobster you know, and um, it doesn't seem right. But you know what? You just keep thanking God that he provides food. He provides you with life. He provides you with victory. And he'll bring you up. And it doesn't matter what the bureaucrat's eating or drinking. God will honor and bless you for having the right heart because you trusted him. and He delivered you from your distresses. Amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Um, let's look, uh, uh, we were in Jeremiah 30. We didn't read Jeremiah 30. It says, out of them shall proceed thanksgiving with the voice of them that make merry, and I will multiply them, and they should not be few. Oh, yeah, yeah, and they should not be, I did read that. Sorry. Let's go on to, um, Amos, one of the minor prophets. Why is he minor? Because it's a shorter book. Um. We have, we have, you know, we basically larger prophets are really just, they're very long prophecies, books. Um, but Amos 4, 5, and offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving with leaven and proclaim and publish the free offerings for this liketh you, O you children of Israel, saith the Lord God. Again, we, are, we refer to being giving sacrifices of thanksgiving. Jonah. Yeah, everybody's favorite book. You know, everybody just likes the idea of being cast into the sea and swallowed by a big fish. Hallelujah. And then spit out on the shore. Jonah writes in verse 7, When my soul fainteth within me, I, within me, I remember the Lord. And I'm sorry, Jonah chapter 2, verse 7. When my soul fainteth within me, I remember the Lord, and my prayer came in came in unto thee in the holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. Wow. How much stuff is going around you in your life that you're observing instead of doing verse 8 and 9, but I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. You're too busy observing the lying vanities. Wow. Just, you know, do the old skin bracer thing, grab your shirt, smack yourself a couple of times and go, wow, thanks. I needed that. Hallelujah. Some of you are old enough to remember skin bracer. Um, it was a pre-electric shave thing you put on 
you know, to get your skin ready for the, their electric razor. Hallelujah. Amen. And I didn't hear any pops out there. Did anybody pop yourself? Run across the screen with a thumbs up if you did. And, you know, I know you said, thanks. I needed that. Hallelujah. Uh, Second Corinthians, let's move into the New Testament. I ain't seen nothing go yet. Well, come on, guys. I'm waiting. Da 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 uh, 14, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are your, or for your sakes, and that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. That it might redound to the glory or rebound, redound or abound to the glory of God. 2 Corinthians 9.11. It says, Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which calls us through us, thanksgiving to God. Philippians 4.6. Be careful for nothing. Don't be anxious. That's the word careful in the Elizabethan English. Uh, really cared more the idea of anx being anxious or worrying than it did being uh, meticulously aware of something. It, this, it conveyed the meaning of anxiousness or fear or um, worry. Okay? Um, so don't be anxious or, or fearful about anything, but, um, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known. Unto God. Look over in Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein, what abounding in the faith, with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, the fourth chapter of Colossians. Continue in prayer and watching the same with thanksgiving. Look at First, uh, first Timothy 4. First Timothy chapter 4. Verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, uh, commanding to abstain from meats, which God created to be received with thanksgiving, of them which believe and know the truth. I mean, Paul was addressing something here, but notice that the meat was to be received with thanksgiving. Uh, the fourth verse, for every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. And then last verse we want to read today, Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7. Verse 11. And the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and all fell before the throne and worshiped God saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. It is one of the things that surrounds the very throne of God is thanksgiving. Hallelujah. It is a vital and very, uh, vital and essential 
aspect of our Christian walk to live with thanksgiving, to be thankful to God, always, always thankful to God. Well, I didn't get this, and I didn't get that, and this didn't happen when I wanted it to happen, and, you know, I was desiring this, and, and I'm glad I'm born again, that the nature of the Father indwells me, that his life is in me, that I'm not going to hell. My name is in the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah. Jesus is my Lord. I am the, the, a son of God, an heir of God, a joint heir with Jesus Christ, raised up with Christ and made to sit with him in heavenly places. Hallelujah. Far above all principality, power, might, dominion, every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I'm established in the ways of God. He leadeth me. Praise God. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. Glory to God. His favor is upon me. I can rejoice in the knowledge that God is my God and the greater one indwells me. Hallelujah. Praise God. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I wanted to take this time today to you know, share with you. It's been about, you know, I guess probably about the length of a regular sermon. Just didn't have any music today. And... Um, but I wanted to share this with you and remind us of the importance of Thanksgiving, to give us scriptures uh, on Thanksgiving, and to uh, remind us of the value and importance of being thankful and grateful to God. Hallelujah. At this time, we want to receive our Sunday morning time and offering. Obviously, we're not in person to do that, but uh, through Cash App or PayPal, uh, whichever one you use, um, we want to um, go ahead and receive that. And to remember that, you know, your tithing and giving helps establish us in positions to be able to do things for the kingdom. Uh, next step, major step for us is purchase of a building. And, um, you know, so continue to sow into the ministry. Um, our records of cash flow and those kind of things all weigh on uh, lending institutions' um, willingness to loan. Uh, even if you've got money in the bank, they want to know what you've got kind of regularly coming in. For the future, when you borrow the money, or you can be able to pay it back. Um, so they want to be able to see a, a consistent cash flow. Uh, so just let's all be working together to see that this the, um, this next phase of Faith and Victory Church take place and uh, possess the land and have our own building in Jesus' name so we can see this 88 vision, 88 vision come to pass. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So listen, we want all of you to know how much we love you, how much we appreciate you. How wonderful it is to be um, co-laborers in the vineyard of God. My, uh, my precious wife, Janie, uh, and I love and appreciate you and thank God for you, for your life, for your testimony, for your faithfulness to the kingdom. You are a blessing and we sure love you and appreciate you. We are thankful. We thank the Father for you. And we appreciate you. Praise the Lord. So if you haven't, go ahead and uh, send your offering. And remember that we will meet with you um, next Tuesday for prayer. Wednesday night midweek service, we resume uh, our series on um, the basic Bible course um, of E.W. Kenyon. Um, hallelujah. Glory to God. The Bible in Light of, of Redemption, uh, his, his basic Bible course. And um, we'll resume that on Wednesday night. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Remember these words from 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We love you. God bless you. See you next time. Everybody have a great day. Remember, Jesus is Lord. And you've got something to thank him about right now, today. We love you. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.